Welcome to 90 terabytes of alternative gaming with your hosts, Taylor and Q. Nuclear launch detected. 90 terabytes of alternative gaming does not represent the views of WWSP, 90FM, or the University of Wisconsin school system. The views expressed and the information given in this broadcast can be used at the sole risk of the listener. Listening to this broadcast is guaranteed to increase your wisdom by five points. The Enrichment Center is required to remind you that you will be baked, and then there will be cake. Hey, listen! Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of 90 Terabytes of Alternative Gaming. Myself, that is Taylor, and Q have both dragged ourselves into the sunlight from the recently released Skyrim to bring you a show, so we're going to be focused pretty much all on that all week long, which you know if you were listening to the show beforehand. Um, for you, those who... You knew that we would be talking yes. about it. For those who are new to the show, we are a video game talk show. We discuss video game culture, new video games coming out, video game developers, video game players, video game tournaments, all video game related things. Mm -hmm. Video um, games that weren't released. Yes, and there is a, a very specific list of people that we do not represent that Q is much better at reading than I am. Yes, uh, our views are purely our own. They don't reflect anybody else on planet Earth. That including WWSP, Stevens Point, the radio station you are currently listening to. We don't reflect the UW Board of Regents, UW Stevens Point, or the state of Wisconsin. Um, the Scott Walker that is being recalled, Rebecca Kleepish who is also being recalled. We don't reflect anybody else anywhere. The Stormcloaks, the Imperials. Um, yeah, I just, I don't. I can't. I can't think of anybody <laughs> that I reflect besides myself. Your reflection. Maybe. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywho, inside the, jokes inside yes, the booth. Yes. Um. Anywho, like we said, I keep saying anywho. That's what I said last week. But, um, we are going to be talking pretty much all week about Skyrim. Uh, which was released on, well, technically the first minute of Friday, this most recent Friday, um, which me and Q both actually got to play pretty much right when it started up. It took a little bit to get it going. It was on Steam, yada, yada, yada. But the game has been far from disappointing. The game has been absolutely amazing so far. Uh, I know Q has put in quite a few hours, as have I. I'm assuming, from what Q has said before, that you're planning on being pretty happy with it for the course of the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I played uh, a good 16, like 16 or 17 hours over the entire past, like, seven days. I think I'm at, like, 21-ish. Six days? Six days? Yeah. It, it has been absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, we should have a couple guests eventually here who are also probably going to be talking about it. Uh, a couple of our viewers are going to be popping in halfway through. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the uh, game came out uh, made by Bethesda's, Bethesda Game Studios, um, published by Bethesda Softworks, um, and published by Steam Online, because it's a distributor. Um, it was directed by Tom Howard. Um, I'm going to use the word directing, because uh, that's the term they give it. And Tom or Todd? It's Todd, right? Todd, Todd oh, okay. Howard. Um, and uh, composed all the music, and I will mention his name right off the bat, Jeremy Soul. He did an amazing job. Um, the music is absolutely out of control they made a brand new engine for the game um it looks absolutely beautiful we'll it, get, yeah we'll it, get to it that. shows we'll get to that at a much later date um it was released um in november 11th of 2011 so 11 11 11 on veterans day thank you to all our veterans out there in the entire world we didn't get to mention that last week we I, did not. I know quite a few of them are playing this i've seen quite a few pictures of veterans playing this game because there's, uh, there's a quite a few of every kind of person playing this game though yeah which I think is the first notable thing, really, here. Oblivion, while it was it was like a legendary game, the amount of people who played it pales in comparison to this. The launch figures, I can't remember the exact figures, but they blew any of their titles out of the water. Yeah. This is by far the biggest Bethesda game to date, and I personally believe one of the best releases they've made. So kudos to them, honestly. They, they got a success that I feel like they deserve. And they are up there in terms of figures with some of the you know the monsters out there right now, such as Battlefield, 
and Modern Warfare. They did not outdo Modern Warfare. I think they're pretty close they did with outdo, Battlefield. They though. did outdo. They did outdo Modern Warfare on Steam by far. Okay, well, yeah, but I'll, that's I'll a different those, market. I'll get, those, I'll get those figures in a second. They sold 3.5 million units in two days, um, with a total of seven million units over the process of the five days that have already been coming out, which returns to them in revenue of five or 450 million fun dollars. Holy cow! Uh, so that's just in revenue. So probably profit. They probably made. They're probably only like 150 million in profit so far because the overhead of all these companies is just. But yeah. this is a big company. They're not obviously as big as ex, ex, as other ones. Yay, but, uh, yeah. Blizzard, Blizzard yep. Activision, I guess. Uh, ZeniMax originally reported that they had made 500 500 fun million. <laughs> 500 fun million. <laughs> but uh, they uh, changed it moments later to 450 fun million. So it's a big difference of 50 fun million there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of money difference. Um, the world just seems like more fun when you're not allowed to talk about currency. But the actual launch shipment of the entire game was 3.5 million units, and they sold every single one of them. And rightfully so. Yeah, they had they had many places where they were actually running out of copies and people didn't pre-order it. That's their fault. Welcome to Steam. <laughs> Steam's not running out of copies anytime no, too soon. No, I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's possible. But a lot of people uh, naturally bought it on the consoles because this game is gigantic. Yes. And in every, uh, it, in every it is shape pretty understandable form. to not have a computer that can run this game. Yeah. Um, I can't even run it on full settings, and I made a gaming rig specifically for stuff like this. So, how long ago did you make this gaming? Rig? I made it about a year ago. Yeah, but how how much did you actually invest in it? Not a whole lot, just about like just under one grand in fun dollars. Yeah, I think American I, fun dollars. I think I've got fourteen, fifteen hundred in mine. <laughs> fun hundred. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not saying the currency, I think we can give raw numbers with the implied currency at the end. Um. Well. This game uh, that we're talking about, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, uh, it's the, the fifth Elder Scrolls game of the entire series, which I believe is the tenth game in all the series. Um, there were tiny ones in between. Do you mean um, just within the the world of like the Tamriel games, or just Bethesda's the, games the Elder in general? Scrolls. Oh, the actual what Elder other, Scrolls. What are the in between games you're talking about? Hold on, let me open this up. I had it a second ago. It's the fifth installment of the actual games. There was mm -hmm. Arena, Daggerfall, um, Battlespire, Redguard, Morrowind, Tribunal, Blood. Blood Moon, Stormhold, Shadowkeep, Dawn Star, Oblivion, The Knights of the Nine, Shivering Isles, and Skyrim. Huh. I guess all I knew was Arena, Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim. I didn't know well, those all are the, the those side five. shots. Yeah, those are the, those are the, the main of the ones. franchise. Yeah. I didn't know about the side shots yeah. at all, though. But they made quite a few side shots um, in the in the whole grand scheme of it. You can see how they built up the Skyrim, all the, all the stuff that's built into it. <clears throat> There's lots of inside jokes within the game, but that's naturally what most game developers would do if they're actually caring about the games they're they, making. They actually include nods to other games within their own like, the company as well. Yeah, they talk I about Pac-Man jokes and things. Yep, in there. There, there was the Pac-Man thing that got posted on the internet. That was pretty funny. And uh, the guards do a little nod to Fallout 3. Sometimes if you walk up to them, um, if you play the tutorial through, you get into like a, a fight with, uh, what's his name, Butch. Because he tries to steal this sweet roll that someone gives to you, and if you walk up to the guards, they'll be like, well, let me guess, someone stole your sweet roll, and little things like that are awesome. I love that about Bethesda. They do stuff like yeah. that all the time. You're doing an awful lot of shouting around here. <laughs> 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 we don't like it. You know, that was one of the coolest things. Um, in, in Skyrim, you have something called a shout. Uh, they talked about it before the game came out, so it's not exactly a spoiler. But uh, you gain we the ability... We won't be doing any spoilers. We, yeah, we will be avoiding all spoilers. So if you're worried that we're going to spoil something about the game, you, the only Fear thing not. you will hear from us is um, actual General information knowledge. about the game or things that Bethesda told us before yep. the game was even out. But uh, the, these shouts are, you know, the dragon-based powers and all that. But if you run around in town doing them... The guards will walk up to you and they'll be like, "Hey guys, or hey dude, you need to not do that. You need to stop. You're making people like scared." And it's really cool because they keep getting more angry at you if you do it. Well, I killed a dragon in town, and one of the guards came up. You should stop shouting. I just killed a dragon <laughs> for you. <laughs> what? No, no. Even cooler when you kill that dragon in town. Everyone in town walks up and they stare at it and they're like, "Holy cow! There's a dead dragon sitting in the middle of town. You don't see that every day." Yeah. Uh, it was it was pretty cool, and a lot of them are hiding and stuff too. And you know, when the when all this is going down, like the the AI of the people in the game yep. is just amazing. It is. There are some amazing. big faults, but but there's always going to be at this point. This, this this massive a game, you can't not have all these little things just mess up. But the step up from Oblivion is so far in terms oh, of character AI. It's so much farther than Fallout. Yes, Fallout was nothing in comparison to this. 
and Fallout was strides ahead of Oblivion even. I mean, every time Bethesda puts out a game, they, they make such huge strides compared to their previous ones that it just amazes me. Um, like, in Oblivion, once you could fast travel to places, you pretty much just, you would fast travel to places. There was no reason to walk around the road, stuff like that. In Skyrim, you can just be walking down the road, and, like, a small quest will just pop up again, like on you. Or you'll be walking down the road, and you'll find, like, this prisoner, and you'll be like, hey... Why is this guy being held prisoner? Read books. Read yep. lots and lots of oh, books. Oh, the lore quests, is amazing. The quest from books. I, I, I'm thinking about doing a media project where I reenact one of the books. Yeah? Which one? There's like thousands of them. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just, just doing that because like the lore that's even in the... The lore that's in the lore of the game. Like, <laughs> is in this tiny little book in the corner of a room... A whole story, like 30, 40 pages long of a whole story in the corner of a room. And what's most impressive is all this lore exists, and the game actually uses it from time yeah. to time. If you know the lore, things will take on additional meaning that like you didn't know about before, which is amazing. I don't want to yeah. say any specific ones, because those would all nope. be spoilers uh, by a long shot. For those out there, um, Skyrim, as we said, is the, is the fifth one of the main Elder Scrolls series. Um, the world of the Elder Scrolls um, is extremely detailed, very deep in realism. Um, tons of places, names, and dates connected, interconnected um, with everything that's happened in lore of planet Earth. To give um, you a hint of the depth, the second one of these, the second one, so a long time ago, had one of the biggest like game maps maybe? of like ever. Ninety six. Like, it included something like sixty two thousand square miles. It was, I mean, you couldn't like you know just walk around all of it because of how old the game it was. But yeah, the setting huge. in which it took place. It, it it makes games today pale in comparison in terms of just raw scope, which is awesome. Yeah, no, I I completely agree with you. I mean, they've always tried to push it the next next step, and it's very I'm very happy with companies that do that because there aren't many. Um, unfortunately, you've got EA and you know um, Activision buying all these companies when they make a good product and then destroying them. Like when big when big huge games came out with Rise of Nations. Yes, I've never Rise played it, but you talk about that all Rise the time. Rise of Nations was, I know we've been asked by a few people to do a list of the greatest games of all time. Rise of Nations is either number one or number two tied with Age of Empires is the greatest possibility, that the, the greatest RTS that there ever has been. Um, Starcraft's obviously up there too. I, I've, yeah. I've rated them in a specific area. I just tell you those are the best ones. It's easier to just um, do it as a cloud without having to compare all the greats yeah. against each other. Um, but... They they were bought and then they were destroyed. They made this game that was almost flawless. I don't even remember ever running to a bug ever. And they came out with an expansion that actually gave a bunch to the game. And then I believe, I think it was Ubisoft, destroyed them. Well, Ubisoft is owned by someone now too, aren't they? I can't remember who they're under, but I swear they're not independent anymore. Um... I'm assuming the internet's will bring an answer to that. Um, Come on, Wikipedia. No, they were bought by Electronic Arts. Oh, they were bought by EA. Okay, that that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. THQ and 38. Yeah, they've. Yeah, there's. I actually didn't know what THQ was owned by EA. I don't know if it is. I think uh, it, it's it's pretty bad. There. I don't know. Whatever. That that's yeah, totally yeah, to the yeah. side of what we're that's, talking that, that's about. That's not what we're talking about. But I mean, we're, we're talking about companies that still push forward their games, which and Bethesda now, does very well. And that's not to say they don't disappoint every so often. I mean, there was the whole fiasco around the scrolls thing, but that was their parent company. But I mean, th there's always going to be the problem of just you know companies being companies. But in terms of their product, they have not lost any of their integrity. I don't think every game that I've seen that was directly produced by. Bethesda has been spectacular, and they just keep getting better and better. Yeah. Um, better and better is, is an understatement, I think. Um, Absolutely. Because I know, oh, just just to point out some things before we full out start reviewing the game, over previous games, um, I'm going to relate this to the rest of its series, the Elder Scrolls series, yeah. not to Fallout, because I, I don't know if that's perfectly the thing you can do. Um, it's only sort of. It's, it's, it's such a, a difference in... I think the difference in setting just makes them have to make such a different game that they're hard to compare. Um, just throw out there in the listening world that you're listening to us. This is 90 terabytes alternative gaming. Um, oh, we're on WWSP Stevens Point, by the I way. I said that. Yeah. Okay. That, um, but basically, this game 
the, the series, it's basically you play as one character. And in every game, it's always been a different character. And the characters are so vague that when you play the next game in the series, only do you learn what your character really was. Yeah. Now, I read through the lore part in Skyrim talking about Oblivion. Now, it was really hard to find. It was in a book in a dusty corner in a, inside of a castle. I haven't found it either. I've seen people talking about the book. And it's basically, like, it's in it called, it's, what it's still, is it? It it's still doesn't tell Oblivion you. Oblivion Incident or something like yeah. that is what it's called. It still doesn't tell you anything about your character from the previous game, but it tells you everything that happened in the other game, including other things that happened afterwards. Yeah. So immediately after um, Ural Septim and Martin Septim were killed and he became a god, yeah. essentially, to these people, and, um, only do you learn that you know he still is a god to all the people in this next game. He okay. still is. Talos is that guy at the end of Oblivion. Wait, really? Martin Septim became Talos, the god really? to these people. But, but I thought... Talos, at least according to one of the random people who was holding one of my prisoners, one of the prisoners I set free as a prisoner, um, they were saying that Talos was a man, though. Talos and that was, it was Martin Septim. Yes, but was not even considered to be, quote-unquote, a god, because that was why they had this man as prisoner. Yep. This man was prisoner because it was considered illegal to worship a man instead of a god. So I killed those people and set the prisoner free because I thought that was stupid. But uh, that, I just I, um, I wanted to bring that to light. This game pulls so many things in. It pulls in lots of North mythology, yep. but uh, right there it pulls in pulls in sort of um, uh, an Indian sort of thing where the culture is amazing. The, in it. When it, when when a god can be a man and be you know here yeah. and there and be in separate places and he can actually be in existence at one time and be in a different person at a different time and it's still that god. <laughs> and so these people, because I know. You you re, you in uh, Oblivion you meet the demigods. You yeah. meet Shiagorath, which is he just yep. wants to kill everybody. He doesn't he doesn't care about anybody. He was he's a Daedric god, isn't he? Yeah. Or a Daedric uh, prince. prince. Yep. But still a demigod. Yep. He had power over everybody. Um and so you see these levels of mythology that they throw into this game and if you don't know them, you still understand what's happening. Yep. But if you understand that the deepness of all of these, you know, understand who Thor was, understand what Odin and everybody did, you understand the relation to these people, these fake people walking and living in the world of Skyrim. You understand what their daily lives, when they go to church every day, and a lot of them do, you mm -hmm. actually can stand there and watch these people walk to church. They have a full daily schedule. And you see them sit there and pray to specific gods. You understand why they're doing it. And when you talk to them, you learn and you get deeper into these characters. And I know plenty of people who just murder entire villages and don't care about the Exactly. People. And the best part about all of that, they have all of that depth, but it's entirely up to you to find that story. You can like like it you don't have to go through this game and find every minute detail. You can be that guy who spent his entire time chasing butterflies and bees I because you want yeah minutes. because you just wanted to make some things or something like that. You can do whatever you want, but there's so much depth there that even if you want to find everything, you never could. So they give you so much option. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean that that first outright you never see that in games. Yes. You never see an option for you to learn about the people who are inconsequential to the story. You you don't learn It's because about it's it's because without it, the game would still stand strong. And so it's entirely unnecessary, and because of that, any company who doesn't view what they're making as a work of art aren't going to do it. Because they're like, well, that's not going to affect you know, the average gamer's experience of our product. And Bethesda and Rockstar look at their games as art from yes. the beginning. They, they plan this out. Because we had talked about this, I think, twice now. When Jeremy Soule, the composer who made all the music, went to the Sony Recording Studios and got his massive choir and got his massive band together and did an insane to record job. the music for this game. Jeremy Soule, you should win a Grammy. And I know they've given Grammys. They gave a Grammy to Civilization. You need to get a Grammy. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly hoping for that. I have spent the last probably eight or nine days with the theme of Skyrim just jammed into my brain. And I don't, I mean, it's not even like one of those annoying things stuck in your head. No, it's no, just it's such just, an amazing an song that theme. you just want it to follow you around. Yeah. Um, by the way, we have our guests here. The microphone's not on. The microphone's not on. They've got to turn it around, it. figuring out all of these crazy yeah. radio you technologies. Talk and you have to talk really close to it when you get in there. It's Would you like now. to introduce yourselves? Oh, we're, uh, I'm Grant. I'm Chris. And they are listeners of our show. Um, yes. Both of you have won the the... Whatever we call our weekly, weekly yeah, prize, our intermission. Awesomeness. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. You both, and, you both yes. won. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they decided they they'd asked to come on the show to talk about Skyrim. Uh, what two consoles have you played on? I have played on the Xbox. Yeah, so have I. You're both okay. Xbox players. Okay. Very cool. I know we had we had some PS3 people mention that they were going to come on the show, but they haven't shown up yet. People are on. And we had a Mac player that wanted to show up too, but he's not here either. Yeah. So. I don't, I don't know. To be fair, they could just be stuck playing Skyrim. They could be still playing yeah. Skyrim. Uh, by one of them, the the PlayStation um, uh, 3 player, he think he said he had like 40 hours in it. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. I'm putting oh. in some time, but gosh, I can't even 40 imagine hours. that. I've seen some people with close student. to 80. So. He's a college student. I don't know how I'm people like do that. I'm 20 something right now. I'm around 50 or something, but I got stuck on like level 12. Jeez. You're Wait, like hold on. 50 hours? And you're level 12? I've been just exploring the entire time. Oh I got my gosh. Ways to fight things. I think I'm level I think 22 with <laughs> a, about 23 24 hours in. I've been ex- I've been exploring I'm at 15, but okay. I'm around I think like 15 just under it maybe. To be fair though, I have sp- I have killed pretty much everything I've run into in that game. Like even like animals that for the most part don't attack you unless you attack them, I I've decided to attack. Really? Yes, things like horkers. I, I kill every horker I see. I kill everything that's hostile to me. They're not hostile unless you get super up close. I fight most giants too. I don't know. I, I haven't killed a giant yet. They're too peaceful. No, no. Too it's peaceful. hard. Not, not even gonna try. They're they're very hard to kill. <laughs> um, but when uh, you guys came in, we were talking about the music. Oh, the music. It's phenomenal. It's um, so good. I'm trying to. We're gonna try to, p- to get a petition for Jeremy Soul to win a Grammy. I don't think I've heard a complaint about that honestly. No. Like um, there are a few things that are a little hit or miss about these games with people, but. Stuff like that. I mean, they just did such an undoubtedly good job. I mean, you start you start the game, and as you're in that carriage, as you start it, you just, the music it's is like, like, I'm just watching butterflies. Wait, I can move this. <laughs> this isn't a cutscene. Oh. <laughs> I can move. <laughs> um, and that's another thing that I know they did in this game, in Skyrim, as they did in other ones. When you had, like, the cutscene starting stuff in Oblivion and in Fallout, you didn't really fully control everything. Yeah. They kind of tried to do this, because they, they must have learned... From what Valve did with Portal 2 and Portal, that cutscenes are not a cutscene. Well, because you're really, still moving around. That really started with Half Life. That's a concept that's been around a long time. Yeah. And and but leaving Half-Life. players in control through your cutscenes. Portal made more money than Half-Life. Yes, this is true, but Half Life was an innovator. Half Life hasn't been out for 2006 or something. The last Half Life. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been waiting for episode three for approximately forever. Um, but, I mean, the more a game company realizes that giving freedom to your players actually makes it somehow more immersive, the better games we're getting. And that's that, that's definitely something you see in that. Even when you're specifically talking to people, you can actually move the screen around a little bit. Yeah, that's something new. I don't think I've ever had that in any other yeah, game. Yeah, it, it's very it's it was almost strange at first, but I kinda like it. Because if like you, if you think they look goofy where they the are, console? you can move yeah. them. Yeah. You can look around when you're talking. Yeah, that's something I I, I like I've seen on the PC, but I mean mm. seeing yeah. it on the console I, I never And I a giant know. step upward Characters' faces are no longer directly in your face when you're talking to them, so people can use things it, like body language like and at distance. Yes, yes. It, it, it's more like a standard conversation. And which there, is there was a there's a patch out for the faces and stuff too to make them even more. Um, uh, so when they actually display emotion, you can tell that there's actually displaying motion, which is pretty cool. I'm yeah. hoping because I I know with the first unofficial patch for Oblivion, um, that they put all these things together and Bethesda said, yeah, that makes the game awesome, but we can't put it on our servers sort of thing. Yeah. It must be from ZeniMax Media saying legally wise. But uh, the, the first, I mean, still to date, I believe the Morrowind um, uh, graphics plugins, the unofficial ones, are better overall than the Skyrim intro ones. Yeah, no, I, th- people <laughs> mod like crazy for those. Like Morrowind continually gets updates like to a year basically. Yeah, there's still people are still playing that. I'm, I'm betting there's people playing that and did not buy Skyrim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is a bummer because I've heard a lot of people who were who were totally the stick their nose up at Oblivion saying that Morrowind was so much better. I've heard those exact same people pick up Skyrim and just go, "Holy cow, I think this is better than Morrowind." Because Skyrim it, it it's amazing. I mean, I, I don't really think I can think of anything that they did wrong other than their interface, which I'll talk about when we're reviewing. Yeah, we, that's the only that's the only negative we came with is interfaces, yeah. but we'll yeah. we'll get to that at that time. Um, On the whole, what did you guys think about it? Uh, overall, very great game. Yeah, it's amazing. I couldn't find a flaw except the interface is a little wonky. It gets pretty wonky sometimes. Yeah. And, well, then, and then horses. <laughs> horses whoa, are whoa, hilarious. Whoa, they're the best. <laughs> My horse runs around and catches butterflies. Yeah, I can't. I, I've never seen that happen. That was pretty impressive when you told me about that. Yeah, I jumped off my horse and I'm standing there killing a mud crab, and uh, I noticed she was gone. I'm like, 
Where'd my horse go? Disgusting and I, creatures. I see her on the top of a little, a little, little itty bitty hill chasing butterflies. <laughs> awesome. Also, horses That's can awesome. beat the heck out of some stuff. Oh yeah, they're, they're. If you get a war horse, it it can run up and just slaughter enemies for you if you need it to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I was very surprised when. First fight with a dragon, my horse is sitting there beating it, and I'm like, I'm just firing arrows. <laughs> I'll just stand back, let the horse do the, the heavy lifting. Um, uh, but yeah, it, um, there's there's a few things that need to be a little fixed there. She shouldn't have that much strength. Absolutely. <laughs> and dragon. honestly, the horses are better at navigating really goofy terrain than the person, like, than a person is. Like, you can have weird things, or like, your horse will like, yeah, they, they, <laughs> they'll be on like a perfect 90 degree plane, and they'll be a-okay, which... It, it it's weird, but even weirder is that characters can't do that. So as a player, you have to like jump around and finagle They'll your way up things. A horse it. can just like nyeh, straight up a cliff. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, with one thing is one thing on the computer, a lot of people have complained about. Um, but this has been the way with Bethesda games all the time, and it's not a problem for um uh, Xbox and not a problem with the PlayStation. Um, Bethesda games only use a maximum of two gigabytes of memory. Really? Yep. So no matter how many gigs of memory you have, it'll never use more than two. <laughs> um, so my eight is just sitting there. I opened the game up, and I had it in one window, and I had my actual Windows console showing it. It was only using 2.5, and 0.5 was for Windows. <laughs> and so uh, somebody Did came out. Did they state why? Uh, Bethesda games always do that. They, well, they, no, I'm saying, do Bethesda state why that's their rule with it? Is it? <laughs> I don't. I never read anywhere why it's that way. But uh, then another unofficial patch sort of thing came out where you, so you fix the memory address and you can make it as, as much as you okay. want. Um, but still, having a game that's so outrageously beautiful use such little stuff to make it beautiful. They are incredibly efficient. And I think almost as impressive is if you d- crank down the graphics, it still looks like a great game. It's not like you suddenly have this terrible game where like you like see things clipping through everything and stuff like that. They made it just look like an older game that was incredibly well done when you like tone it down, which is it, it's yeah. that's something that is very impressive to me because usually people are like, oh, you're not playing it on its you know recommended settings. Because I think if you install it on the Xbox, you guys are playing on the high quality. Uh, I think if so. you don't install, you're playing on medium. I think the install for the PlayStation is on high, and I think because I know there's very high and ultra for the computer. Yes. And then there's ultra plus that you can make yourself and go into it, and then you make it where. The entire ground is just covered with fauna and just plants everywhere. Like, you look and it's just solid plants instead of, you know, little patches of just, like, flat land. No, it's just solid plants. <laughs> the problem with the Xbox version, though, is on day one, at least, of it, if you installed the X, if you installed it on the Xbox... There were problems, right? Yeah, there. you went down in quality instead of up in quality. Really? Yeah. But they, I think they patched that day one or day two Yeah, they have, all, yep. all the systems had day one patches, including, yeah. the, including the PC, which actually we were able to install before the game was even out, thankfully. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people, a lot of places, including um, uh, our actual, one of our sponsors, Gaming Generations, uh, gave the game out a little early so that people would actually have the game installed and then they'd be able to play it at midnight. Yeah, because um, even though we picked it up on Steam, neither me or Q got the game start, started no. up by until, like, probably 1230-ish? No, I was about 10, Quarter 10, after? Okay, yeah. yeah. I was we, a little bit after Because we, we had to reinstall DirectX or something. And I was yeah. Like, yeah, and it has to unencrypt all of it right away, too. Yeah, the unencryption process was... It took forever. That was the most stressful, like, ten minutes of my entire day, when life. I, when, I, when I found the encrypted files, I went in there and I tried opening them and actually opening them through, you know, actual programs that I used to unencrypt programs. Yeah. And it was encrypted in, like, 256. So, like, the number <laughs> that encrypted the file was 256 numbers and letters long. <laughs> There's no way you'll ever crack that. No, there isn't. I mean, like, when, when you taking use... Taking their game seriously. AES-256, two, two, I mean, when you encrypt a file, it's pretty much impossible to, mm-hmm. impossible to break. And, uh... Apparently, uh, Bethesda and or Steam really cared. Really cared. I don't. Well, I don't think there was anybody who'd managed to like have the game leak or anything like that. So I mean, they they well, cared two, and they did it rightfully. Yeah, two fifty six is yeah impossible to crack. I mean, you have to. You have probably a thousand computers, the greatest computers ever, linked together. Don't underestimate nerds. <laughs> if you're able to break two fifty six, I would love to know. Let me know. 90 terabytes of alternative gaming. <laughs> Facebook.com slash 90 terabytes. I would we love to know. We have a job for you. I will write a paper for you, and I will get it published, and we will make lots of money. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee every country on the planet wants to buy it from you. <laughs> All right. We are at the halfway point. Do we want to do our intermission here real quick and uh, then come back and start doing reviewing? Um, you're listening to 90 terabytes of alternative gaming. You're on 90 FM, your only alternative. For gaming. Uh-huh. Just and thought I'd say it. You're, you're, you're welcome to say that every time because that's, <laughs> that's what we do. Um, but uh, 
We are a video game talk show. We're on uh, 5 to 6 p.m. every single Wednesday. And we'll be every single Wednesday for now until probably the end of eternity. Until the end of eternity. Yep. Until the sun goes nova. December 2012. End of eternity. I guess, yeah. <laughs> the entire universe is just disappearing. End of eternity. Um, anyways. Depends on which uh, 2012 we have, you subscribe we have, to. Uh, <laughs> we have a song picked out. What we do on our show is we give away a, a 10 fun dollar, which is actual real currency. We have to say fun dollar because we're a non radio station. Um, gift certificate to the Tech Lounge here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Uh, basically what we do is we play a song for you on the internets, or if we have the actual song, we play it for you. Um, and basically what you rarity. do... And what you do is you give us a call at 715-346-2696. You always interrupt me and do that. I'm sorry. Um, I, I get bored. Yeah. Um, and basically what you do is you give us a call and we give you a gift certificate. Neither of you are eligible to win this gift certificate, so you're on the show right now. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, give us a call at 715-346-2696 with the name of the game of the theme that we're going to be playing. We're going to play a theme of the game, and you you actually just call us up. The leaders didn't usually. You don't have yep. to go for a level or anything like that. Yep. You just give us the name of the game. This I'm going to give you a hint. It's not Skyrim this time. It's not Skyrim. It was Skyrim last time. Um, this time it is on the PlayStation 1. We have a PlayStation 1 game for you. Um, that it system is ex- made me. Extremely iconic game. Or is it the PSX? It is the PSX. It's true. Oh. The PS1 was the shrunken down version of the PlayStation. Yeah, you can still play it on that. <laughs> I don't. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. It was um, not made for that yeah. console because it didn't exist at the time. So, yep. Yeah, just give us a call at 715-346-2696. With um your guesses to the name of the game, and we will give you a gift certificate if you win. If you don't win, then you don't get one. Um, so if no one is, wins, then it piles up. Here is their song. We'll be back in about five minutes for ninety terabytes of alternative gaming here on ninety FM. Your only alternative for gaming. <laughs> Ninety terabytes of alternative gaming is brought to you by Gaming Generations in Stevens Point, located at 135 Division Street. Phone number 715-254-9990. Gaming Generations features new releases and a wide selection of used games. They also have the classics you grew up with and the know-how to get your console up and running again. That's Gaming Generations in Stevens Point, your source for gaming. terabytes of alternative gaming is brought to you by the tech lounge offering the world's best next generation and retro game systems along with great tasting fair trades coffee espresso jet smoothies and energy drinks open tuesday through saturday noon to midnight sunday 2 p.m till 10 and closed on monday located at 1036 main street in downtown stevens point visit them at the web at www.techloungesp.com the tech lounge where the future is yesterday 90 terabytes of alternative gaming does not represent the views of WWSP, 90FM, or the University of Wisconsin school system. The views expressed and the information given in this broadcast can be used at the sole risk of the listener. I mean, let's face it, the opinion of these two guys is about as pristine as Wikipedia. After all, their source is the internet. And now, back to the show. Fight. Hello and welcome back to 90 Terabytes of Alternative Gaming. You might have caught the end of me dancing and uh, uh, semi-singing, I guess. Yeah, I heard it. To the Mortal Kombat there. Um, but we are a video game talk show. You just heard the most disappointing of our giveaways ever. Because that was an incredibly obvious song and that was the first one that no one's ever won. Um, Nobody won. Yeah, and no you know one won. It right now, call. Yeah, we will extend <laughs> it for a couple minutes and we'll answer. If you, you can't think be you on the radio with but us. But if not... In a couple minutes, I'm going to tell you what it was, and if it doesn't make you groan, then there's there's something wrong with our listener base. But it's one of the most iconic games of all I know. time. It was huge. I, I I don't know if it makes me feel old though, or though just the, sad. Uh, the two normal winners of the show <laughs> didn't know it right away either. Yeah, one of half of and he had to yeah, guess. Half of our guests knew it. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm still quite surprised by that one because yeah. that was one we assumed that everyone would know, but apparently not. Apparently huh. not. Uh, How strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Anywho, we, this is 90 terabytes I, I need to stop saying anywho, but you say it a lot. I know I do. Um, you're listening to 90 terabytes of alternative gaming here on a 90 FM, your only alternative for gaming. Um, and we're a video game talk show. We talk about video games lots, um, because that's all we talk about actually. I don't think we've talked about anything else besides video games. We talked about the military for a while on one episode. I remember we were talking about virtual reality in the military. It's it was pretty much games. the furthest off topic we've ever gone. It's sort of video games. It was kind of kind of like Inception. Know. <laughs> <It's video games. laughs> military made it's made it's video games. this is true <laughs> aliens well, this particular episode <laughs> is our skyrim extravaganza um because it came out last week and that's pretty much all i've done since uh for the most part in terms Besides of games homework. at least yeah it's it's been pretty much work school and skyrim but um I've not been disappointed in any way, shape, or form. No, no, I don't think there's actually been a disappointing part of the game. And this is the part of the episode... Interface. And I, well, yeah, we'll I, I want to address yeah. that. But. Uh, so this is the part of the episode where we actually do the start of the review of the game instead of just talking about it for 30 minutes like we did. Um, I, mean, I could talk about this game for like six hours if you gave me enough time, though. So yeah. um, Basically, I like to start... Um, we review our games out of a thousand point scale. No, it's, it's a hundred... But we have decimals. Yeah, so it's it's a ten thousand point scale and a hundred scale. Yes, <laughs> it, it it's ten thousand contained between zero and a hundred. Well, it's ten thousand over hundred. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the current meta score was, I believe, ninety five. Yes. Which is usually relatively re- reliable, but I think I'm probably gonna end up going higher at, at the end here yeah. because, like I said, the only thing that I would say is detrimental to this whole game, like, at all, has been the fact that the interface was made to be cool-looking and not function at all. Um, they wanted this crazy concept. They talked it up a lot beforehand, this whole, like, this carousel of constellations where you see all your scores and you look up in the sky and you can see the constellations. And you click archery and, and it opens light armor. Yeah, <laughs> it, the, just... This is that's all of the menus. All of the menus, especially on a computer, you can hover over an option and it'll select it. And if you click anywhere else while that's still selected, you'll go into that. Um and that wouldn't be a monstrous problem, but it doesn't always register that you're hovering over something. But it, it's, it was reflected through all the consoles. Was it? How yeah. does that happen in the other consoles, though? Because it seems like you can only yeah, we didn't, select I didn't the one. Have that many problems with the interface? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd, I'd heard I've heard not as big of negative as the PCs, yeah. but I'd heard negatives from the from I mean, Xbox. It's not and, that fluid, but. Yeah, you, hit, you hit B, it automatically just yanks you right out of the interface, and you're back to battling already. Yeah, to, like, I have not found this yet. I don't know if somebody found it, but is there any way to go from one of like a specific menu, like Magic, back to the, the menu tree? There's no way at on all. On console, you can. Nope. Mm-hmm. I can't. You yeah, can? I've done it. You, if you like, if you go to Magic, press left on the D-pad, you can press right and go back to your main one, then switch over. There's There'd be no equivalent to that on the PC that I can think of. Which, left and right keys. it really if does you, seem... If you could even use those. You can't even use the left and right keys in the map. You have yeah. to use W, A, and S, and D. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. No, no, there's, there's, a, there's a few little problems with a lot of them. It, it feels very much like, and that's the, this is the only like part of the game that feels this way, but it feels created for console by long shot. The well, menu feels the game, well, like... The game was designed on the Xbox. Yeah, but it, it feels like, it, like none of the other, the rest of the other parts of the game feel like they were poorly ported to a PC. That feels exactly like I'm trying to play an Xbox game with a mouse and having all the associated problems with it. Um, the menu is just, it, it's been incredibly frustrating for the most part. Uh, the item menu isn't completely terrible, but especially the skill one, spe- like you have to click between the stars. There's no like nice little thing where it's like, oh, there's an arrow pointing to that one. Click on the arrow. You have to try to click on the star, and if you click a little to the side, it'll like shoot you off to a new constellation. Yeah, and... yeah. Like like I said, you click on archery and it opens light armor. Yeah, it's. And it, maybe that, apparently that is just a PC problem because neither yeah, of you look like you've ever had that. Yeah. Also, though, like you'll be in one of them though, and like you'll press up, and it'll there'll be like one. It's like kind up, of up, just and... kind of up, but it goes one over here, like way up top. So, I mean, it still does it. Yeah, it's, but it's not as bad as like shooting it's over just, to a different constellations. Yeah, yeah. Not as it's bad a as very touchy <laughs> menu, on, like just as a whole. Yeah. And the worst thing is, most of it was done for cosmetic purposes, because they thought that that was the coolest idea. Todd Howard was going. Crazy over that. That was a really cool idea. If it would have kind of, it looks nice. But I don't. I mean, all of what they were aiming for was all unnecessary, and all of the necessary things in a menu were totally discarded. 
the ability to fluidly change things and then get back into the game is not there, but it looks cool. And that's totally backwards priorities, and that's the only thing that really disappointed me about the game. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't think of anything else that was disappointing. Um, we will move on to our, like other pros of it. Um, when I first started the game and I got to the big city in Whiterun, I stepped out of the uh, the the top castle part, Stormreach, mm -hmm. and I just stared at the mountain. You can do that for a while. And I stared at it for about three minutes. Yeah, the scenery is it was amazing. Just absolutely beautiful. And you know where you can have a game where you don't have an actual set goal, and I can run around catching butterflies on a horse, and be entertained. And be entertained. Like very entertained. You can also catch bees. And the first thing I did when I caught the bee is figure out if I could still eat those, and you can, and it doesn't hurt you. And I was disappointed. Oh. I thought it would. I thought like I'd eat it and I'd lose a little health or something, but I didn't. So he, apparently, I'm talented at Par bee apparently, eating. Apparently, apparently, uh, alchemy just makes sense. Oh, I haven't seen this before. Just eat it. Yep. That's <laughs> probably my favorite part about alchemy. You have to, in order to learn all the ingredients, you have to just eat them. And so whatever it is, if it's a poison, if it's you know something that helps your back not hurt, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're just gonna take a bite and hope to God that it's not something bad. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, overall, um, is there any other cons before we start talking about lots and lots of pros to the game? There's, I just, I really can't think of any cons to it for the most part, other than having almost, trouble with the almost too much stuff to do. Like, there's, it gets to a point where you have like so many miscellaneous quests. Yeah, oh. I will say that there, there is a lot to do. But the is nicest that, is thing that a is. Con? I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's a con. It would be a con if you couldn't deactivate quest markers, because it would turn into oh, a mess. Be, oh. But because you can just you can turn them on and off at your own desire, it's it's still pretty clean, I'd say. Yeah. And it keeps all the you know the millions of side quests down to a specific one called miscellaneous, so yeah. you don't have to scroll through quest after quest just to find it. Are we getting a call? Yeah, we got a phone call. Answer, because I want them to win. Turn off your mic, and we'll just talk about it. That's um. Please get that right, by the way, whoever we're talking to right now. You want I was going to talk. What, what is it? Come on. Come on, please. He, he, he got it? Yes. Awesome. Got All right. The game was Crash Bandicoot, and you people took so long. <laughs> That's the biggest game. That was like launch for it. Um, okay. Very cool. Who is, like who is he, and can we say his name on air? Uh, can we say your name on air? Can we say your name on air? He says yes. Yes, who is he? He is Blake Hansen. Blake Hansen, thank you very much for restoring my faith. All right, well, Q takes care of that. Um, you guys were saying that there's almost a little bit too much to do. What ex like, what did well, you mean by that like, for the you, most part? Like any little thing you do can start a miscellaneous quest. Yeah, like reading a book. Yeah, yeah or just like, talking to like some random person on the yeah. street. They'll be like, "Hey, you should do this for me." You're like, "I, I lost I guess. my sword. Yeah. Go explore." <laughs> People are very Bye. eager to ask you for favors. Um, but there are a lot where you can just like. Press X, and it'll show you on the map where to go. Yeah. So that's usually. Not, usually, but there's some that's just like, yeah, go find this specific person. Well, I keep accidentally fun. finishing quests. Like, yeah, I, if you I have was enough looking quests through... in your inventory, if you just talk to anybody, sometimes you might yeah. randomly finish a quest. Which I think is kind of cool. Um, and there are quests that have negative negative things over the top of it, like, uh, like alerting uh, a mother that her daughter died, stuff like that. Um, like, there's, like, those quests is, like, I didn't really want to do that, but, you know, I got entrusted to do the quest, so I kind of have to finish it. Um, and I didn't really want to, and, uh, <clears throat> I guess that's one thing that makes the game even deeper, is you care about these people that you're, you know, telling that Which their daughter died. Which didn't happen in Oblivion. No. A combination of the bad voice acting and the writing right being there, pretty time. subpar, but, um... Uh, uh, it it you just couldn't care about those characters, and in this, each character does feel very fleshed out and very different from each other, and because of that, you can have characters that you hate, and you can have specific characters who you're like, yeah, I'll do whatever you ask. You seem cool, so. And then you eventually get them. And each character has their own liking meter of you. If eventually you get it high enough, you can steal anything from their house. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah thank you for your key. I'll just go you know, take your stuff. <laughs> We're good friends, right? Can I have the gold on the wall? <laughs> Like, and there's a couple places, like, the guy will just walk up to you and say, thank you for being a good friend, and just walk away. I'm like, cool, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks, Skyrim. You made me yeah. feel like a good guy. Yeah. I, I do like the uh, bad Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, guards. gosh. Oh, yeah, there's a yeah, few of them. The, uh, the Nords have very, uh, for the most part, they're supposed to be, like, Norwegian accents and stuff like that, but... Every so often, you do run into basically Arnie. Like, you get the governor coming up <laughs> multiple times. 
And it's pretty funny, but it's also very believable. The characters look like they would sound like that usually. And uh, that's something that we didn't really talk too much about. The Nords are like, they're the native people there. And th them being the native people it plays a big role in just like a lot of the story. They have a very like ingrained culture and it's, snow. there's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so much snow. But there's it's, so much snow and it falls dynamically on objects and et cetera. It, it's pretty amazing looking. It's um, really cool. We had talked about that in previous shows, I think a couple times, that just the dynamic snow, dynamic rain, it's like rain, rain falling on stuff, I mean, leaves. Well, the trees. Current. Yeah. They, yes, and I, oh. the first thing I did is I jumped in to see if it would carry me, and it did, and that was really cool. I also shot a, a salmon who was he was you jumping a with a bow. I that was I wanted to know if I could do it, and they were jumping up a waterfall, which was already really cool. And I hit it, and he just disappeared down the waterfall, and I never found him. But it was <laughs> awesome because I could yeah because I could do it. <laughs> it's like it's it's such an open world, and it's so outrageously fantastic in that in that in that idea um the plot is just a beautiful plot for what i've played of it so far um, well even the side like last time around like doing like the mages guild and stuff like that the quests were pretty like boring they were long usually but there wasn't a whole lot of story to it and the story that was there was pretty subpar it was just kind of you know like oh you need to do something so that you can end up becoming the leader of this guild let's find something to make you do uh but with this one i've only done one of them i've only done the college which is the mages one this time yeah. And it was short, but it was really fun. And Champion, the, cha or the companions are pretty, pretty oh, well. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that one. I've heard pretty cool things about that. I, I think that's the yet. next one I'm doing. It's pretty good. Yeah. I'm just hoping being magic isn't going to totally pigeonhole me out of that. Yeah, they're, no, I don't think it will. Okay. Because no, yeah, we can, you can do anything in this. Yeah, companions okay. don't care. Because awesome. like if you were, uh, it's, no, I mean, I think you can do anything because, I mean, all you have to do is oh. gain ability in yeah. it. Yeah. Because like in, in Oblivion, you got stuck in one thing. Very it's much like so. like when you tried to join the fighter guild and you were a mage, it didn't work out so well. Yeah. And then you accidentally, you know, fire spells one of the people you have to go to a quest with, and then they're like, no, don't come yeah. back. <laughs> well, also, I mean, th this one, I am a, a much rounder character than I could have ever been in Oblivion too. Like, I am very much focused in magic with my character, but... I can just run around with a bow every so often and train it up, and my bow is now, it's relatively effective. It's not my main thing, and most of my perks haven't gone towards mm -hmm. it, but I can be an effective bowman, which is really cool to me. Yeah, it is very cool. Yeah. Um, so, my biggest pro with this game is the music. I'm I won't say it's my biggest. No, I, I'm, I'm going with the biggest. Okay. Um, second, the, second, obviously, the visuals, um, oh, so which, co which coincide with the music, obviously, um, but... Jeremy Soul came out with a four CD soundtrack to this game, also, which I think I may be getting and then donating to 90FM. That would be awesome. <laughs> but um, uh, the music, they they used it perfectly too. It's it's not like beating you in the face the whole time, but like um, this I, this one, it wouldn't be a spoiler to just briefly talk about the dragons because I mean it's a huge thing. But I was really worried that the overall theme was not going to get used enough, and I was going to just have that be, like, wasted. Every time you fight a dragon, that just surges back up, and it's awesome. It is the and, like, coolest walk, walk, fight music walking ever. Walking up to a wall where you get another dragon shot, which I know they showed to us beforehand, yep. the music, as you build up to it, it's like you can be, you know, like 150 meters away from it, and the music's so quiet in the background, but you know it's there. I'm like, oh, it's so <laughs> a boss fight. It's sweet. <laughs> yeah. It's so quiet. It's like I had to basically have my speakers on so loud, and I turned the music up a little bit in the actual options so I could hear, like, those little things. And, like, there are plants that make noise that you have to find for some quests. Yep, Nern Roots. They've yeah. been around well, forever. There's, there's other ones, actually, too. Really? There's other plants that huh. make um, and there's other the other things that make noises, and you can only hear them because they're so quiet. And you have the music up so loud, and then you get attacked by a spider, and then it's you usually jump out of your seat. Oh god, I <laughs> hate spiders. I hate spiders so much in that game. It's like, they I, have scared me so many times. It's like the, you've been walking through a dungeon that drops on your head. Yep. You're so ingrained in the game because you're walking through a dungeon. And they'll actually live like on the ceiling or like in a big tunnel up above where and they have their nest. Know. And yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> I was like, I don't like thinking no, about this. I'm not even like, one. yeah, I'm not even it's arachnophobic. Ultra, you can geez. actually see the, 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 like the, the actual venom dripping off their tusks or whatever yeah. you call those things. Their fangs. Fangs. <laughs> they're gigantic. They're, they're, they're Yeah, they're they're not small spiders. <laughs> no, it's like you can actually see the venom dripping off. I'm like, I am so scared right now. And they, made them, they made them so well that it's not the standard RPG spider that just like crawls out of the room or something like that to be killed by one hit. They're really strong. And they fight really well. They actually use their web and stuff like that. And I, I, they're terrifying, but they're at least cool rather than every other RPG where it's level up on spiders and rats for twenty minutes. But there are rats in this too. Yeah. 
Skeevers. Skeevers. Yeah. Skeevers. And you can eat their tail. If you really want to. I have not done that. <laughs> I don't know if it aid you in potion making. It's under the it, food It's category. an alchemy thing. Oh, I thought it was just under the food category. I'm pretty sure it was an alchemy thing. I, I remember yeah, seeing. I I've only done yeah. like three alchemy potions. Oh. Can you be a vegetarian? You could be a vegetarian, you could be a vegetarian actually. Vegetarian. Yes. You can. You can. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think they could ever force you to do anything. I have no potions left. Oh, look, I have 400 cabbages. Eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> you go through people's farms just stealing everything, and they stand there staring at you. Why are you stealing no. all my stuff? Something I haven't tried is cooking. How would, like, have you guys tried that uh, at all? I did a little bit. Is it really worth it? It's like you it, just it go to a seem... pot, and it's just like, oh, make, you have this stuff, make it. It's... Does it make an actual useful food item? Because the rest of the foods are not it, that give useful. Give or take. Kind of. Some, I think some of them might have like a perk, but hmm. I've only made like It's only a like a 300-second perk or something. Yeah. yeah. Probably not, not something super long. Um, any, what is your, what are your two biggest pros of the game? Definitely visuals. Like, Definitely as soon visuals. as I started looking around, I'm like, this is amazing. This is so beautiful. You can yeah, don't have that. I'm going to go with the scale. Like, you can have this, you can have, like, their dungeons are huge, but then you go outside That's a and big it's improvement. still huge everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Um, I honestly think that the biggest step up for me has been the, the actual combat dynamic. Because combat in Oblivion was very much a trade blows fight. There was not, you, you couldn't be dodging, You could, there was no sprint. I love dodging was, arrows. Yeah, stamina was barely <laughs> useful for some, some classes, stuff like that. In Skyrim, I am I am out of stamina as a mage all fight long. Because you're sprinting I am, every Yeah, I'm sprinting all over the place because they made all the enemies much stronger too, it seems like, for the most part, just because you have those options. What difficulty um, are you guys playing? I forgot I'm to mention that. medium. I never changed it, so yeah, I'm, yeah. Medium. I'm on I'm on expert, which is the second hardest. Oh, yeah, uh, I, and you've been playing master. I've been right? putting it on. I put it on master. Anytime anybody ever touches you, you die. Yeah, no. <laughs> even on expert, a bear runs up out of the woods, hits you twice, you're bear, dead. Bears on medium will destroy. Yeah, you. Yeah, like, bears are hits. terrifying. <laughs> it's like I know I was I was playing on medium and I was just going through everything, so I turned it up to turned it up to master, and then I walked up the first big mountain and the frost rolls are just one shotting me, so I'd bring it back down. It's like that's the only time I ever brought it back down is because when these frost rolls are just one shotting me. That everywhere. kind of that kind of stuff exactly though. Even though it can one shot you, technically, if you sat there forever, you could possibly kill that without ever being hit by using your environment, using your shouts, stuff like that. And that's just was, stuff that would never have happened in Oblivion. I was only an archer. But even as an archer, if you're timing your punches just right, you can stagger them right before it's they do true. their attacks. There's all of these things that weren't there in Oblivion. It. That's very that's very true. But all of those things, they weren't there in Oblivion, and their addition in Skyrim has made fighting just so much more visceral than it was back before. It feel, yeah, and I think that's probably the biggest step up for me, honestly. Good, good words to use as a visceral in the sentence. Yeah, I love that word. Yeah, um, yeah combat feels very satisfying. Yes. Like, even, like killing a dragon is just... Oh, killing a dragon, dragon is so crazy. good. Outrageous. But we're coming up to the end of the show, actually, yeah, so we, we should probably start tying some numbers to this. Yeah, I have my um, number written down. What were the categories that we exactly used in uh, Portal? We so used, we can, a, we used plot... We used visuals. We used music. Um, gameplay, I assume. Gameplay. Um, and uh, I guess the tie to that you have to the game, like how you feel playing it. Fun factor. Yeah. Okay. So we have those five and then an overall. Yeah. All right. So do you want to go first or should I? Uh, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, the visuals are absolutely beautiful. There's there's nothing wrong with them. I've had I've I rarely ever even see artifacts like the game can't load it fast enough. Sometimes I actually have the game load too fast. I don't even get to read the read the loading screens. It loads instantly. Um, and I have it on a fairly fairly slow hard drive, but eight gigs of RAM, it loads pretty much. It's there. Yeah. Um, the visuals absolutely amazing. The gameplay I haven't found anything wrong with that either. I might say that archery is a little overpowered because I can one shot people, but that it makes but, sense because you, yeah. you hit somebody in the head with an arrow, they're they're gonna go down. But as an exchange for that too, once they get in close, you're in some trouble for the most part. Yeah. Um. Because it takes much longer to draw your the bow. The tie I have, to. the tie I have to the character, because I know there were a few times when I saw people would actually get executed in the game. They actually, you actually see their heads get cut off. This is a rated yeah. M rated M game. It, it's pretty and brutal. You to see, see it in immediately the start of the game. Yeah. Well, I I watched like I. I don't, I don't want to get too like graphic about it, but the details during the head being chopped off, if you watch the head afterwards, like their eye moves. Like, I watched this guy blink, his eyes roll back, and then his eyes close. I, I, I was almost disturbed by seeing an execution in a game, which is... Yeah. And, it, and, and it was like, having, to, it was having to characters that I had a tie to because I was on their side. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing them get killed. That's pretty deep. 
It was very I don't cool. think it can get more deep than that. I give it a 99.325. On the whole game? Yeah. All right. Well, I, like I said, I would honestly put the gameplay on this at as perfect as this game could ever have it be. For the game that they made, the gameplay is perfect. I've never run into an issue where I, I feel like I'm getting stuck on too many things. Invisible walls are kept to a complete minimum. You very rarely will have clipping issues, and when you're fighting, you are fighting. You never have to be pulled out of that fight for the most part. You are very much immersed in it. And, like I said, I killed a giant at like level 6 solely by dodging, and it lets you do that, and that's amazing to me. Yeah, I know, because there was a few people at the beginning right away that I was actually yep. able to dodge everything they threw at me. Yep. I'm like, and, it's, <laughs> and as a mage, I need to, because I am super fragile. I pretty much die from everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, the music, I would put not... Well, yeah, I'd probably put that pretty close to perfect. I'd probably give both of these, like, 99s. Uh, I don't like giving 100s. Um, really? You just said... No. Well, 100, 100 for a category, not 100 yeah. for the oh, game. Okay. Um... I would give the visuals a, I guess I'm going to stick with the 99s here, honestly, um, except gameplay I think I have to bring down only because I think that's the only place I can incorporate the interface, interface. and that would probably bring that down to a 97 for me. Um, and then <laughs> overall, overall, I think I would give the game probably, I'd say 98.3? Two more decimal points, buddy. Oh, God, 98.3... Or two. No, no. I, I had to give it some thought. You have to figure out whether or not you want to inch towards the set, the one above it or below. And our two guests, you have very little time. Go. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> everything's amazing. The only problem is the interface, but I can kind of negate that because of the favorites list that I yes, can use. Yes, that was a good move. So I would give it 99.875 because I, like I can't think of any system. other complaint. Yeah, the only downside is that interface, but paper fixes it, and then the visuals are just beautiful. Uh, ninety nine point four three one. Yeah, very, very no, good. no perfect. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I hear no you, perfect. Mason, back no here. No, we have high standards. We do, we do. We we have to be very precise when we gave. So I mean, that's pretty much a rough ninety nine point like two somewhere in there. All all four of us put together. Uh, it's a beautiful game. It's on the PlayStation Three, the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and the PC and the Mac. You can get it at any store, possibly anywhere, including, uh, actually, I believe, um, uh, one or, actually, both of our sponsors, maybe. I think so. Yeah, uh, which is Gaming Generations and Tech Lounge, as you heard their commercial um, uh, little advertisement in the middle of our show. Um, so, Dynasty Warriors Extreme Legends. Oh, we have one person in the room excited for the new <laughs> Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> I do have to ask why you're not just playing the other Dynasty Warriors, because they don't change. I'm getting it on Friday. <laughs> Gaming Generations <laughs> didn't order it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, I can't believe they're still making those, but yeah. I think thank that's you. pretty much the end of our show here. Yeah. You can like us at uh, facebook.com slash 90 terabytes. Um, thank you for listening to our show. We hope you absolutely loved it. I know there's quite a few out there that do, um, including the two guests yeah. that are always listening to our show. Thank you for listening. Oh, yeah. um, thank you for coming on the show, yeah. by the way. Yes. Sign thank you. Off once. I, uh, I'm <laughs> clicking the button here in a second. Thank you for listening <laughs> to 90 terabytes alternative gaming here on 90 FM. Your only alternative. Full gaming. Hey, Taylor, do you have anything left you want to tell to our listeners? We are not selling or distributing for commercial purpose any music you have heard on today's show. All music, games, ideas, and content are the express copyright of their original and current owners. We, 90FM, the UW Board of Regents, and UWSP do not own anything you have heard on today's show. Hey, this is Wes Platt. This is Taylor. And this is Q. And you're listening to 90 terabytes of alternative gaming. Only on WWSP, Stevens Point, 90FM, your only alternative. For gaming. <laughs>